Welcome to the Bentley Systems Training Course where you are going to learn how to design steel structures in STAD Pro Connect Edition. In this video we are going to be focusing on assigning different design parameters to control the behavior of your model. The first two parameters we're going to review and assign are the UNT and the UNB parameters in the AISC 360 design code. These two parameters are used to define the unbraced length for the top or bottom flange of a member. Now under normal conditions when a beam experiences bending, one flange is in tension while the other is in compression. Compression flanges can experience local buckling or lateral torsional buckling between points of bracing. Now by default, STAD Pro will consider the unbraced length of a member from end node to end node of the member, but you do have control over that by using the UNT or the UNB parameters. For example, there may be instances where the top flange of a wide flange beam is braced by a deck or slab of some type, precluding any type of buckling of the top flange, whereas the bottom flange may be supported at discrete distances. Under this condition, the unsupported length for the top flange would be one value, and the unsupported length for the bottom flange would be another value. These parameters will require the application of engineering judgment. We will now return to our sample model. Now for this exercise, we're going to assume that the top flange of the infill beams are braced by a deck or grating system every 12 inches, which would resist any type of buckling of the top flange. The first step to assign this parameter is to select your members. So I'm going to hold down my control key and use my beams cursor to select all of the members that are braced in this manner. Once I've made my selection, I'm going to go down to the Steel Design Whole Structure dialog and click on the Define Parameters button. I'm going to scroll down until I find the UNB and the UNT parameters. Let's go ahead and select the UNT parameter and we're going to specify an unsupported length of the top flange as 12 inches for this exercise. Now since we made our selection first, we'll go ahead and click on the Assign button. Once we're done, we'll go ahead and click Close. And we can see that that parameter has now been successfully assigned. Now it is important to note that the top flange and bottom flange of a particular member are defined with reference to the orientation of the member's local axis system. The flange in the positive local Y direction is considered the top flange, and the flange in the negative direction is the bottom flange. If you ever wanted to turn on your member orientation to verify which direction it is, on your keyboard you can just hold down Shift and O and your member orientation would turn on. Your local Y flange for the members that we had selected is pointing up as indicated by the red arrow. To turn it off, we'll again just go in Shift O again. The next parameters we're going to be reviewing are the ones that will be required for slenderness checking. Now in the Design Parameters dialog, several parameters are available to check the slenderness or the KL over R ratio of individual members. In the KL over R ratio, each variable can be described as follows. The effective length fa factor, the K factor, addresses the end conditions of the columns. The unsupported length, or the L, represents the distance between the two points at which the member is braced against lateral buckling. And the radius of dioration, which is the R, is a property of the cross-section expressed as the square root of the moment of inertia divided by the area. Now since the radius of gyration is a function of the member cross-section, it is available in STAD Pro from the section's database, and thus is not a user input value. You do, however, have influence over the values used for K and L by assigning different parameters, either the K factors or the L factors according to the local X, Y, or Z axis. Now in the absence of any user input, the K values are assigned a default value of 1.0 and the L values are assigned to be equal to the node to node member length. It is up to you to assign the correct K and L values to the member 
for the model. Now it is important that you understand the system of bracing for the model. For example, a member that is braced at a point against buckling in a plane may not be necessarily braced for buckling in the other orthogonal plane at that point. Under these conditions, it may be necessary to modify the default values of 1.0 for k in one of the directions. The columns in the figure on this slide will illustrate an example of the condition where it is likely that the product of ky and ly would be significantly different than the properties of kz and lz. Now for this exercise, we're going to assume that the minor axis of a few of the columns are unbraced for the entire lengths of the columns. To ensure that the bracing is considered correctly, we're going to specify an unbraced length for the minor axis as the total length of the columns. We're first going to start by holding down our control key and select the columns we want to assign this parameter to. Next, we'll return to our steel design dialog and click on the define parameters button. To find the unbraced length parameters, we can find our kx, ky, and kz parameters along with our lx, ly, and lz parameters. For this one, we're going to specify an ly of 213 inches, which will be the full length of these columns. Once we're done, we'll go ahead and click on the assign button and then we'll click close. Now the last parameter we're going to take a look at for this exercise is the track parameter. So for this exercise I'm just going to go straight to the define parameters area. I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to find the track parameter. Now the track parameter is used to control the level of detail to which the results are reported. Here we can see that the default is zero, so it's going to print a medium level detail. If you would like some additional information in your output file, you can select either option one or two. For this exercise, we'll go ahead and select the first option. We'll go ahead and click the add button followed by close. Now the program is going to want, you, want to know for which parameters this one's going to be applicable. Now we're going to be performing the design on all of the steel sections that were assigned using the AISC sections database. So we'll assign this parameter to those sections. To do that, we're going to start by highlighting the track parameter. We're going to go to the geometry tab in the ribbon and assign it using our by property command. We'll hold down our control key and we're going to select the W12 sections the tube sections and our ankle angle sections. Once we're got done, we'll go ahead and say assign to selected beams and we'll click the assign button. Now for this model, we're going to assume that those are the only parameters that we're going to need to manually assign to our members in order to get the program to consider the exact physical model that we're dealing with. It is a good idea to go through all of the parameters in the Define Parameters dialog and use your engineering judgment to see which parameters would be applicable to your particular model. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.